let's get into it. The first question is, Hosanna mentioned, and that's one of the girls that w we watched a video on, she mentioned that failure made her become more bold and fearless, even helping her in the long run. Can you identify any failures or mistakes in your past that God has used to strengthen you and prepare you for something else? Um, I'm going to say, girlin! Hey, girlin! Faithful, faithful girlin! Hey, girl! Um, so yeah, we're talking about failure tonight and we just asked the question, can you identify any failures or mistakes in your past that God used to strengthen you and prepare you for something else? Failure is for me, if I'm going to answer the question first, I'm going to say that it's something that is always happening in my life. Like I'm always making mistakes. I'm not a perfect person. Um, I've made bad decisions in friendships. I've made bad decisions in my family life. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I've also made bad decisions when it comes to just people that I know. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, when it comes to dating. Like, to for me to get where I'm at as far as marriage, I've had to go through trial and error to find the right person. So I think everybody's life has some type of failure in it. And I don't think this is the right place for to me, for me to be sharing all my failures that I've been through. Um, <laughs> um, but if I could think of one specifically, it would be the, the, the failures that I've gone through when it came to my career over and over and over again and trying to find the right job. Coming out of college, it was really hard to find the right job. Um, and then like most people, some people graduate from college and then boom, they find a job. And that wasn't the story for me. It took me like three years out of school to finally, finally get into a good position that had to do with my degree. <laughs> okay. So it took me a while and I had to bump my head a few times for me to get to a place where I'm like, wow. So here's the thing. I could have graduated and then applied, 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 and applied and nobody answered and I quit altogether. That's the thing that happens with failure. Sometimes we take failure as, man, this is never going to happen for me. I tried one time. It didn't work. I tried so another quit. time. Well, well, go ahead, Steph. And so then after you try, you probably maybe try again and then you quit. Yes. A, a lot of the times we don't realize that. I, I feel like there's a negative connotation with the word failure and we shouldn't, we shouldn't put the, ourselves in a box when we failed something. We should just, all right this didn't work that's an experience now i know i can try a different way do a different yeah. avenue look at it from a different perspective because that's what everything is it's all about experience whether it's good or bad you're learning something from it yeah and you couldn't hold on to to something because you failed or because you failed feel as though you can't do it again or you can't try again you know yes you gotta keep yeah. moving especially if if it's a word from God that this is what you're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. all right? I tried it this way. That was wrong. Maybe I, I'm trying it from my point of view, and maybe I need to try it from God's point of view and then, you know, do it differently. Or maybe Before. it's supposed to be something that I work with someone with and not by myself. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's another thing. A lot of the times we, we're, we're so focused where we're not looking outside of the box either. In Tunnel trying, vision. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're not trying to solve the problem or the, the situation and not understanding that, just like in math, there's different ways to solve the same problem. Yep. Yep. For sure. Um, and you just, as you were talking, and I think Gerlin mentioned, take it as a learning experience. That failure is definitely how you should uh, view your failures. Um and another failure that comes to mind is, and I, I already said it, but I'll go a little bit, I guess, more further into it. And Steph, you let me know if you feel comfortable sharing any failures mm -hmm. um, that, that you have on your mind. But one of the failures that I, that I consistently <laughs> kept doing wasn't on the topic of love. So love is your heart. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's you giving that to multiple people, if that's... Okay how you want to do it or you just only want to give it to one person and failure in love is no joke because it hurts it's different than you not having any money in the bank or 
you not, you know, acquiring something, love is your heart getting broken. And then you having to pick yourself back up every time. And mm. what I can say is, um, I feel like for me, because as a, a child, my mother raised me to be a hopeless romantic. That's just who I am. I've always believed in the power of love. Whether somebody treated me like trash on Monday, I knew at some point somebody was going to treat me right. And I think right. I think that's like the easiest place for the world. That's the most sensitive, but yet that's the easiest place for someone to continue to try these days. You see what I'm saying? And, but and every other thing, like starting a new job, we're scared. Or if it's like, I'm going to go and start a new program in school, I'll do it. You see what I'm saying? I, I, I'm scared. I don't know if I want to do that. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm going to start a business. No, I'm terrified. I can't do that. But when it comes to love, which is the hardest thing ever, we are out here just throwing it out there. That mm. just blows my mind. Like, why is it so easy for us to give our hearts away, right? But when it comes to doing purpose, when it comes to starting out something that God told you to do, that is beyond you, you won't do it because you're scared. Right. Yes. Girl, and said, my failure, trusting the wrong person. Girl, believing they were a friend, it was tough, almost ruined my life. Girl, we are with you. I got the same failure. <laughs> the same failure. That was that was kind of what you was gonna say too. Yeah, it was. Well, you, you know, both you and Girl and know about my you know failure with trusting people, where um, it's still something that I'm working on and mm -hmm. forgiving that person because you know, like literally, my life was on the line by trusting that person. So, um, just realizing that not everyone is the same so that you can be, because it's, it's kind of this in the same aspect of love when you're loving another person, because mm -hmm. once that person now hurts you, you looking at everybody like this, stay away, don't come over here. And you <laughs> got your guard up, you, you, you know, you refuse to let other people in walls, you know, exactly. And it's like. I got already said, like, there's a wall, there's a gate, there's crocodiles, there's a whole, a whole thing around this heart that you can't come in because yeah. of dealing with something that you thought would have been forever or, or at least someone that would have gone with you through life and then realize that they hurt you and could care two licks. Yeah. You know? yeah. That's, that's, that's a failure. That's a failed friendship, failed relationship. That's, mm -hmm. some, that's something now that you have put on, put in your permanent record. Wow. It goes with you. It stays. Yep, because wow. now you're looking at everyone in that aspect of, this person did this to me. Are you going to do that? Hmm. Wow. Wow. So, like you said, it's tunnel vision. So, like, you, you take the scenario, you take the failure, and you say, this is life. Mm -hmm. So, it's like, how, how can we... So we, so a lot of us, like I said, I don't think that I'm the only hopeless romantic out there. You uh, know, and I, and I think there's a lot of people out there that love love and hopeless romantics will continuously try to love. You see what I'm saying? So I guess what I'm saying is how can we become hopeless purpose filled people? Mm -hmm. How can we, Hey Kim, that's my best friend. Ah, so hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey girl. She so, yes. <laughs> but think about it like what is some people are hopeless romantics when it comes to love how can we become purpose-filled hopeless god-led people you see what i'm saying like how how do we become that i think we become that when for me i know to for Love me it. to still love people <laughs> for me to still love people um, you gotta go to God because He's the only one that's gonna, for one, heal you mm -hmm. from being able to to be able to trust people. And second, it's um, you, you're gonna start because you got that hurt. You're gonna have discernment now. 
sometimes mm -hmm. you know you're gonna you're gonna be able to discern well is this person really for me is this person really about my father's business with me mm. because you don't want you don't want to just go through life with just anybody yep you know you don't want to go through life with someone that's going to make you compromise your your character your morals you know it doesn't even always have to be someone that's spiritual like you but they, they're never going to make you second guess your relationship with god i like what you're saying so you're saying that failure can help me in the next it can yep. help me try again because now it's empowered me to see, okay, this is what happened. This is what I did the first time I allowed toxicity or I allowed bad things into my life. This mm -hmm. is what it looks like if I am, if I saw failure before, these are the signs of failure. These are the, the precursors before I get to failure. These yep. are the prereqs. So when I start, when it starts, something starts smelling fishy, I can be like, hold on a minute. I'm not going to let this happen to me again. Exactly. Exactly. Because you, you, you got that experience now of how you felt when that happened to you, of yeah. how the situation looked. Yeah. All situations are going to be the same, but the emotions are the same. If that makes yes. sense. You know, you get that, that intuition feeling like, Oh no, I got to go. Hey. I got to go. All hey, of our fam is coming on here tonight. <laughs> Look at my other bestie. She don't know she's my bestie, but she's still my bestie. <laughs> yes. Holla at what's her wait, what's her uh we gotta put her Instagram out there. She does hair, get your hair did. Uh underscore K X B X C y'all. Okay, get holla at her, get your hair done. <laughs> okay. Yes. My braids. Yes, we getting your business out there, boo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, holla at there, holla at uh Caitlin, she will hook you up. Hook you I think up, you can up. actually pin it if you want to. Oh, well, tell me what to do and I will do that. Because <laughs> you know I will break this thing. I will end, um, this, end this call over this. Don't do no free promotions. <laughs> We're just <sister> there hating. <laughs> Why are you hating, Kim? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. She said, girl, let's say yes. After that, I'll make my point. Yes, girl. Kaylin, put your um yeah, your, put your hair page because I don't know how to link it. <laughs> yes, next thing you know, I'm over here breaking stuff. <laughs> okay, all right. So as we were saying, so we were talking about failure and whatnot. Yes. So the next question is, why don't mistakes and disappointments have the final say? Mm. Okay. Mm. The final say in our lives. And her handle, y'all, is at cat beauty shop underscore. Get your hair did. I just told okay. you. Go after Sabbath, okay? <laughs> and yes. we're definitely saving this live. Okay. Yes, we are. It's going um, on YouTube too. Yes, yes. Go on YouTube. Um, you said how do we not make it the final say? Yes. How do we not make mistakes and disappointments have the final say in our lives? Because I think that's what we were just saying. Like we let the pain settle in and we be like for me, Black. personally, I think, and this is just my opinion, you know, I could be whatever. Um, I think for it not to have the final say, we have to, one, grieve it. Grieve that loss. Grieve that failure. You I know, love that. You know, because especially when it's a person that hurt you and made you, made you feel like you failed. Because we fail, we can fail in anything. We could fail in our job, ministry, things like that. But because we were kind of focusing on whether it's a relationship or a friendship, I think we have to grieve that. We have to realize this is no longer, this person is no longer part of my life. Mm -hmm. And it hurts, mm -hmm. but I'll be able to let it go. And then mm -hmm. after you grieve that, whether it's a day or two, you know, you go back to God and he's going to tell you what to do next. And now whatever you're doing next, you're going to move, you're going to run. And I think that's what we have to do it, for us not to be stuck in the mindset of being, of failing. We have to be able to move on to the next. Yeah. Put, put, your, put your big girl panties on, your big boy underwears on, your shoots, your boots, tie them up and keep it moving. Because girl. Because not stay in that failure. Because once you stay in that, you know, that's when you have, that's when you have depression sitting on you. That's when you feel like you don't want to go through the day anymore. You just want to sit in bed and lay under the covers or, you know, 
whatever is your defense mechanism that's not healthy. For sure. For sure. I, I completely agree. I think grieving it allows you to realize I'm human. Like I'm, I'm a human being and I don't have it all together and I need help and mm -hmm. I need somebody to strengthen. I, I don't have, and that, that's the moment where you can start to hear God say to you that the failure doesn't define you. Yeah. So when you take the time to grieve and you take the time out necessary to regroup and realize like, hold on, I need to shut this down because sometimes people internalize failure and they, they look at the failure, the bad thing that happened and said, and they say, I am that thing. Yep. I am failure. That's who I am. That's my identity. That's my DNA. That's what always happens to me. I try, I do this, I go here, I do that. And I continuously fail. And that's what you cannot allow anyone to tell you is that's when that's you true. fail, you have to get to a place where you are quiet enough where you can see whether or not this is not me. This mm -hmm. failure, this mistake, this opportunity, this disappointment that didn't work out, it's not me. Nope, it's not. Because Girlin if said, you continue, oh, sorry. oh go ahead, read what oh, I was going to say. Girlin said, the difference between being strong and being stubborn, that's the difference between being strong and being stubborn, which is facts, facts. on facts on facts. We got to stop being stubborn. Stop. Because mm. being stubborn is not doing nothing but giving you a headache okay. and making you distrust everybody now. Yeah, you know, you can, by being strong is also understanding your weakness, understanding that this hurts you but you're gonna get through it that you're not stuck in that mindset like uh what's her name lisa said right that's her name lisa in the video that <laughs> that when we're stuck in the mindset of failing where certain uh emotions come such as bitterness we need to start being honest in that process being honest with ourselves and picking one person that you really trust and be honest with them you know you going through something, you got to let somebody know. Yeah, You can't bottle that in because no. then that emotion is going to come out in a wrong way. Fact. You are going to explode. Yeah. You want you want to tear up on somebody. Somebody's going to get in the uh, soft. You in the cross sabotaging and you got these knives and everybody's getting hit. Everybody's getting hit. And that's not fun at all. You see what I'm saying? And what you were saying, in addition to what you were saying to Lisa, Lisa also said, get counseling. Yep. So we are here, if you feel internalized, like you're internalizing your failures, your disappointments, your griefs, your inability, inability to trust, you need to talk to somebody who's a therapist. Don't just talk to the trusted people because here's the thing. I learned this today. Your friend is not your therapist and the therapist is not your friend. So yeah. the therapist can tell you the truth without feeling like they need to hold back. You see what I'm saying? Whereas the friend is only going to tell you but so much and they can't help you as much as they can, as they need, as they want to. So you need to find somebody who's, who's um, an expert at mental I, health. I, I think the, an impartial person. Yes. Your friend, as though they, 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 because the, the person you, you're going to trust is someone you already know that's not just a yes person. That's not just going to tell you what you want to hear. No yes like man. Said, it's going to be someone that feels as if they probably can't let it all out. Mm -hmm. So you need someone that's impartial to the situation or what, whatever, whatever you need to talk about. And, you know, whether it's a therapist, a counselor, a pa like whoever, someone that just doesn't know you, I guess, is the better term, will definitely help. Yeah. Because they'll look at your patterns, they'll look at your behaviors, and they'll be able to diagnose what's wrong with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, and let me tell you, I'm in therapy now, and your girl is on her third session, and I'm, I love it. Therapy is amazing. Do you hear me? <laughs> therapy is life. I'm saying that because, and I, I, I'm going to put it this way. When they talk about Jesus and therapy is real, it is real. Because it helps you to, to see all of your blind spots. And it helps you to be more empowered. So when you have gone through those failures and you bring up the failures in those conversations with your therapist, the therapist is able to show you not just what they did wrong, what did you do wrong? Mm-hmm. 
Because that's the thing. Sometimes we get so caught up in the hurt of failure that you don't realize that you're the problem. Yep. You blaming everybody and their mama for your issues, your problems. You see what I'm saying? And in therapy, the therapist can tell you what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And there's something called the ego. And we'll talk about that a whole nother day. The ego is no joke. Listen, Freud said it best, you know. You'll be out here serving your ego and don't even know it. Everything is about that self-satisfaction. And you. And the ego tries, it, it's so genius because it basically uh, camouflages it as service or it's camouflage it is camouflages it as something that's beneficial to other people we ain't even gonna go on that that's a whole nother topic okay but what we wanted to get to you at when it comes to failure you not only don't want to don't give up number one we're also telling you talk to a therapist talk to somebody you trust and in addition to that we're telling you don't stop talking to god mm -hmm. You start talk you stop talking to God, you will lose everything. Agreed. Because only he really knows you. And that's why Jesus and therapy is so powerful because of the simple fact that if God is already telling you something and you go to therapy and that person confirms what God said, boom. You're so empowered to do exactly what you God has been telling you all along and you have practical steps on how to make that happen and the thing about it is in our culture we're talking about our culture Stephanie and my culture a lot I don't know about now but therapy was very taboo it's mm -hmm. as if you can't if you went to therapy you're that 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 means you're crazy something's wrong with everybody's you. crazy who ain't crazy oh yeah Every smart person, every billionaire, every person that has made it, every successful person on this planet is crazy. They have a crazy in them. Why? Because we've all been raised in a place of trauma. You, we all have gone through trauma. I don't Facts. care who you are. You've been through trauma. Facts. And so your trauma makes you crazy. It, you could have been three, you could have been five, you could have been two, you could have been 15, you could have been 12. It don't matter what age you were, as long as you experience trauma, even financial uh, a decline, you don't go on broke, you don't, you, somebody not trying to be your friend, you being bullied in school. These are traumas. Mm -hmm. And so all of that causes everybody to have a little crazy in them. And what I loved about, I was listening to this therapist panel talk today, Yes, someone once said we all suffer from PTSD. Yes, yes we do. Really. Yes, that we do. True. Talk about it. We was listening to this um, conversation today, and the lady was basically saying, like, yo, you know what's crazy? You can look at somebody. They can look like they have it all together, right? Just by looking at them, you think they got it all together. As soon as they open their mouth, the crazy come out, and then you change your mind, Okay. Is that how we uh pick our friends? We listen to people talk like, there's something off about you. <laughs> <laughs> there's something saying. off about you. Facts. I don't think I, I don't think you're crazy and my crazy align. It don't go together. Which is why you got to, that's why it's important to figure out whose baggage you can handle. Can I handle your baggage? Can I handle, can you handle mine? Mm -hmm. And then if we can handle each other's baggage, we like, yes, let's go. We together. We doing this. Right. Mm -mm. That's what makes good friendships. That's what makes life more interesting is when you can handle other people's crazy. Okay. But everybody crazy. I ain't want, I don't want to hear anybody talking about they not crazy. You crazy. <laughs> crazy. Everybody got a little crazy. In them. Mm -hmm. It just all depends. Can, can our craziness work together? If yes. not, I'm going to need you to stay on the other side of the table. Can our craziness get married? <laughs> can, it, can, it, can, it, can it have a union? Okay. okay. Listen, 
So the next question that they ask is, how does refusing to forgive undermine purpose? That's deep. Uh, <laughs> we didn't read these questions before we came on here. We just wanted you to know that. Okay, yeah. we just going by the template. Um, dang, because you're holding on to the, 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 the past, everything that happened. And mm. And it's crazy. What's crazy is because we feel like, oh, because this person hurt me, I can never forgive them. And I, I remember either watching it or someone's telling me this before, but someone hurt you and you hold on to it. That person has let that hurt go. They are no longer thinking about what they did to you, about how they hurt you. They are living their best life and you under the pillows crying. This person hurt me and you hold on to this hurt for six years and... What does it do with? Nothing. Becky and said you're not letting yourself grow as a person when you... Facts, because this is the thing that we forget all, at the same time. When we forgive, we're not forgiving the person. We're forgiving ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're letting it go. Like, all right, I got into this situation and it didn't work. I'm not holding... I'm not holding on to them because I'm hurt. I'm setting myself free so that I can move on from the situation where I no longer have to sit there and think about them ever again and move on. Whether, you know, whether y'all stop being friends completely or in a relationship completely, or it's just a, I could pray, I could pray for you from a distance. I could love you from a distance. That's it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Caitlin. <laughs> She said, some things are just unforgivable. <laughs> she said, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, I understand, Caitlin. Some things are unforgivable. I can understand why you would want to. And that's your, that's your prerogative because if, that, if they did something, you can't forgive them. And I understand. However, yeah. we're going to talk about scripture. Scripture tells us we have to forgive because we've been forgiven. So mm -hmm. the same reason why Jesus got on the cross for me is the same reason why he got on the cross for them. So it's not, it's not up to us to decide whether or not they deserve forgiveness. However, we do have to, we can be, be in a space where I forgive you, but you need to give me 10 feet. You see what I'm saying? I, or I need to put a boundary of protection over me so that what you did that was unforgivable you don't have the authority to do that again. Yeah. Because now if I let you do that to me again, I look unwise. I look unjust. I look like I don't have any morals or What's values. Fool me once, shame on them. Fool me twice, shame on me. Like, yeah, you're not going to get another chance. You're not going to get another opportunity. You're not. I'm sorry. I am you have sorry. to put boundaries. Boundaries are important. So if Back someone does to you, yes, forgive, but don't forget. So if somebody at some point in your life has done some wrong to you, you know what I'm saying? You have to be able to let go of the situation, like Stephanie said. You also have to forgive. And here's the thing. Forgiveness is not overnight for us. Ooh, Nelson Mandela said, holding a grudge is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to be hurt. Come on now. This you want to really? Do you want to be on the live? Yo, how how can we do a three way on this joint for <laughs> real? <laughs> oh, you're spitting facts, okay, Madam Pops? You're spitting fire, Madam Pops, <laughs> Madam Pops, coming through. <laughs> Yo, like seriously speaking, that is true. But and that's the thing. So when when the forgiveness comes, we realize forgiveness is difficult. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is not possible. However, it is possible. That's what we say. Forgiveness is possible. But do you think putting boundaries is fully forgiving? Yes, it is. Yes. It's absolutely forgiving because boundaries doesn't mean I don't talk to you anymore. Boundaries doesn't mean I don't consider you a human being. Boundaries doesn't mean that, um, you know, I don't see you as a human being or I don't love you anymore. Boundaries just means we have, there's limits on our friendship. So we didn't go, you went to full access to my Facebook profile. And then because you messed up, now I got to put you on limited. But yep. you still getting access. Do you see what I'm yep. saying? It's the same. Think of it like how you use, you said Facebook. Just think of it as Instagram. It's, you get to see when I post stuff, 
You can't see my IG stories though. There you go. There you okay. go. Okay. It's so limited. I didn't block you. I didn't block you, you. You can't see everything. Exactly. You know, you you don't get that access anymore. Mm -mm. It's not like I, it's not because I hate you. I don't want to be your friend. No, we're still friends. But now there's a new there's a new category now. There's a new subtext. You know. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're different now. We're on a whole new level. I'm up here. You're like our friendship now is over here. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. So what I was trying to say is, if you feel like something happened to you that's not forgivable and it's hard, right? What you can do is for that person, pray. That's what I do. When somebody irks my last nerve and does something that I'm like, I can never forgive them. I'm like, Lord, I know you call me to forgive, but I can't forgive right now. So I'm praying that you help me forgive this person and slowly but surely I'm able to forgive and help that person. When you start praying for your enemies, it shows your spirituality is at a different level. It's not at the same place that it used to be. Well, you can pray for somebody and be like, they did me wrong. I don't wish them harm. I wish that they prosper. I wish that they be able to change. I mm. want them to be different. That shows that you have the mind of Christ, that you have his love flowing through you and that your flesh ain't talking. You see what yes. I'm saying? Girl said, even Jesus knew when to walk away from the Pharisees. Can I throw something at you? Where's your ball? Oh, I'm back in. I always, it's always away from me. <laughs> like, this is crazy. <laughs> that is facts. Jesus didn't camp around. When did you see him hanging around the Pharisees? When? Never. They came to him. They came looking for him. And then when they got to the point where they wanted to stone him, Jesus somehow Swift I mean, a ninja, okay? He's a ninja. Swift. <laughs> Somehow, some way, he got access and walked out of there, and they didn't find him. They never found him until the opportune time, until the right time, until God said they could lay a finger on him, okay? So Jesus did hit whatever he was supposed to. He was in the middle of parables. He'd be in the middle of stories, and they come out of nowhere like. Well, why did this happen? And why did this person say this? And they trying to get him to say something that's going to put him into trouble. And he will flip the script on them. One more thing I got to say about forgiving and the whole concept of forgiving. They talked about offense. Mm. They said that offense is the number one way Wait. that the enemy will try to eliminate your purpose. So when you're in purpose and you realize, ooh, this is the Holy Spirit. When you realize that you're in purpose and everybody out there mama is trying to offend you or hurt you or attack you and people coming for your life, you're right where you're supposed to be. When the offenses start to pile up, you are exactly where God needed you to be. <laughs> yep. They said that betrayal, bitterness, offense, toxic waste, discouragement, anger are all evidences of you being in purpose. You are right where you are supposed to be. And the devil is trying to make you quit. Mm -hmm. So when somebody, they, what they said that I loved is that, number one, failure is not final. Failure is not the end. It's not the end of your life. It's not the end of who you are. It's a it's a one like it's a one. Step. It was a moment. Exactly, it's a moment that you're gonna get past. You know, mm -hmm. it does not stay for a while. Church. What's church? What you mean, church? This is What's church. <laughs> you said this is church. No, I'm just guessing. I don't know what she said. <laughs> what What you talking about, Willis? Okay, so failure is not final right but they also said are you going to live a life offended or a life forgiven mm. oh like that oh, oh okay, okay, you okay, know okay. we all heads we all know what that means <laughs> they got new swag every day i quit man. <laughs> <laughs> we, we getting old we gotta catch up we gotta have come have uh the slang of today meeting For real. <laughs> yes so 
I like that they said that we should choose not to stay offended. <laughs> Kate mm-hmm. dying. <laughs> we should choose not to stay offended. When somebody offends you, you got to let go. Mm-hmm. And you got to be willing, even if you were offended. I do this all the time. I'm always getting in trouble from Stephanie. She would tell you, I get offended. And I will go to a person and say, I'm sorry. She don't like it. I don't. I she don't. hates it. <laughs> but in I order don't. for me to make peace, because I need my conscience clear, because I need Jesus to be on my side. I don't need him going nowhere. I will go to that person and be like, I don't know what I did, but I'm sorry. Can we fix it? Now, if you you out here trying to be toxic and you out here trying to do stuff to me, I'm not coming to you. You're going to stay where you at. But I'm not staying offended. Mm. I can't stay offended. How? If you stay offended, you will never move on with your life. You'll never access what God is trying to give you. And that's mm-hmm. what they were trying to tell you tell us earlier they said if you remain in your failure you'll never obtain what you were supposed to obtain Mm -hmm. just like failure is also put it in the same category as offended so if somebody offends you or they hurt you don't take it to the point where you eat it up and now everybody else is poison everybody else is Oh no, I can't never trust nobody. Right. I can't be friends with nobody. That's what not offense healthy. does to you. It's not healthy. You know. And if you're in offense and you're in purpose, how will you be able to serve people wholeheartedly when you have a grudge? How can you serve? How can you give? How can you love and you got offense? When you realize that you are bitter in your purpose and you're tired and you're burnt out, you need a timeout. Your girl is taking a timeout, and I ain't no problem telling y'all. Two weeks, I'm taking a timeout. <laughs> that is life. Such is life. Life happens. People get hurt. Friends go away. Mm-hmm. You need to regroup. But that's like what we said earlier. Like You need to give yourself that time to grieve, because if you don't, one, you're not being honest with yourself. Nope. And then you're not being honest with the people you're going to serve. So when you realize, like, all right, this has been too much for me. Mm-hmm. This has really hurt me. I got to step back for a minute. Yep. You know, whether that's you just being ghost or you fasting or whatever, you have to know what's best for you and for your emotions when failure has happened. Facts. Failure of any kind. Failure of a friendship. Failure of a job. Failure of ministry. Failure of reaching. Failure of teaching. Failure. Whatever it is. There's so many types of failures. But what I love is that failure is not the end. And something that Stephanie taught me. That's why I love my best friend. I love her. I'm sorry. (laughs) No, but I tell you I love this girl because I remember there was one time I was having a conversation with her. And I was like, I don't understand why so many people that I love, you know, I try. I try to help them. Mm -hmm. And instead of helping, you see what I'm saying? They don't see it as help. They see it as I'm trying to stab them. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or they think I'm trying to hurt them. And something she said to me that changed my mindset as how I look at myself. She said, the difference between you and them is that when you came uh, in front of failure, you kept pushing. They gave up. Mm-hmm. She was like, you never give up. That's, you always pushing. You always fighting. You never, you never throwing in the towel. People who don't like to do that don't want to be around you. You get on their nerves. Mm-hmm. And that changed my mind because I never understood that. Not everybody wants to be a grinder. Not everybody wants to be a hustler. Some people just want to wallow in their pain. And sometimes you got to let them. You got to honor people's choice of allowing them to stay in where they're at. Yeah. I can't want better for you. I can't want better for anybody. You have to want better for yourself. And if I want better for myself, 
that's because I went to a, a God who showed me that I was better than myself. I'm not better than myself. Mm-hmm. When you talk to God, God starts to tell you, this is who you are. This is what I want for you. This is what you, you're capable of. This is where you're going. This is what you can do. But if you keep talking to people, people finna drag you where they are. Yep. It's, it's just like um, people with addictions. If mm-hmm. you can't you can't help a person get out of their addiction until they have hit bottom and realize that they need help. Yep. Facts. I, like, I can't, I can't help you out of your failure because nope. I don't know what you're going through. Mm-mm. I can empathize, but that's about it. Facts. If you don't want to get out of it, I have to, all right, I'm going to continue to pray for you, but I can't do anything because you don't want to. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. The next question says, Christine, who is the leader of the uh, Propel video that we just watched, she said that grace, mercy, compassion, and forgiveness will take us to our purpose. Mm. In which of these do you need God's help? Mm. Ooh, wee-hee. Okay, so the words are grace, mercy, compassion, and forgiveness. Which one of these, you don't have to share it. This is for you to chew on by yourself. Which one of these do you need help with? Because those four things are necessary for purpose. Hmm. Because some people are have all four of these things for themselves, but not for other people. You have grace for people. You have mercy for people. You have compassion for people. You have forgiveness for people, but not for yourself. Or you have grace for yourself, mercy for yourself, compassion for yourself, forgiveness for yourself, but no one else. Mm. Yep. You need all four of them to do purpose. You need all four of them for success. You need all four of them to do what God tells you to do. And there's one of them that you may be stronger in than another. And I'm going to be honest with y'all, all all four of those things, I don't have them for myself. I have them for everybody else. And that's why I get to the place where I need to shut down and I need to regroup. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a people, I'm a giver. That's what I do. I, whoo, let's throw it out. Give everybody everything that I got. And mm-hmm. then I'm empty. And I have nothing left to give. That's Don't I say that all the time, Steph? Yep. I don't have time. nothing else. I gave everything I got. And I don't use those four things for myself. I don't have mercy for myself sometimes. I don't have grace. Compassion or, for, or forgiveness for myself. I'm ready to do all those things for everybody. Even my worst enemies, I will forgive them. Stephanie will tell you. I'm always ready to kumbaya. Um, Stephanie be like, stop it! <laughs> she be like, girl! I mean, girl would know too, because I, I, I don't like when people try, like, I'm ready to be like, who, who, who I gotta hit? Why, why are you saying sorry? No, nah, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> she's um, getting better though y'all she is yeah <laughs> um i think that it's it, you know depending on the person depending on the issue that you have whether it's for others or for yourself but i think if you're someone that has it if you're someone that doesn't have it for yourself those four mm-hmm. girls don't be putting my dick name out there <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh! <laughs> I won't even say it. I'm not you know gonna put you out there. Still looking for me. <laughs> um, they'll find out when you show up, right? <laughs> okay. But um, yeah. What else? <laughs> it's cool, but it's cool. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, it's if you're someone that doesn't have it for yourself, I think it's because we're just so much harder on ourselves. Like you know, you are your biggest critic. And it's easier to be like, I can give to everybody, give to everybody, 
because you don't have to keep the focus on you. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's always hard when the focus is not on you because then you deplete. Mm -hmm. And then you have to have that moment to, you know, get filled back up again. And then yeah. for those that it's the opposite, it's it's harder to, it's easier to do it for themselves to have those, it was four, right? For the, uh -huh. It's easier to have it for themselves and not for others because they've been hurt so many times. Mm. And it's it's now, I gotta be on guard. It's not even I'm having discernment. It's just I'm on guard. Wow. I like that you threw in discernment. Um, where did I read it? Discernment, they define, a therapist defined it. And she was like, discernment is being able to know what is right or wrong for your life. And I used to think discernment was this spiritual thing that I needed to be able to be like, yes or no. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. But discernment is particular to me. It's not a, a general blanket for everybody. Discernment is specifically for each and every individual to realize this is good. Like, because let's talk about oh, me and Stephanie, we love cheap. Okay, we love cheese, diehard cheese fans. As much as we both like it, I can't have it because it I flare up, I get allergies. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I have to discern based off of my body type and my body function is this good for me? That's discernment. It's so simple, but in church. They make it out to be this. It's as if some magic dust got to flow on your head and then you get it. Right. Discernment is taking your life experiences to figure out, is this good for me or is this bad for me? Yeah. It's so simple. And mm. grace, and you put that grace, mercy, compassion and forgiveness like you were saying all of those things are they good for you yep they make your life lighter when you extend mercy you realize you need mercy when you extend forgiveness I need forgiveness I need compassion I need grace but if you're having a struggle with the four, I would recommend like I'm about to do with two weeks after, cause I got, we got two more sessions Friday, next week, Friday, the session after that, I'm off social media for a month because I need to hear who I am from God. I need to regroup. I need to be in a space where I'm able to move past my failures, my mistakes, my lack of whatever I don't have. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I need to get filled up again. Last question. How have you seen God take fractured pieces in your life and use them to create something new and beautiful? Mm. Hmm. Wow. I gotta think <laughs> I guess um in in the way you see people well for me in the way I see people mm -hmm. I don't have to I don't always gotta be like eh, you know and I think I, I for the most part I think I discern pretty well um, <laughs> so it comes with you know because I, you know, had issues with people before and felt like, you know, I failed so many friendships and, you know, coworkers or whoever. And God is like, you don't have to stop being nice to people or being open with people mm -hmm. because of these hurts. Yeah. And I think because of that, I'm able to have friendships that have lasted long you know and not realizing like 
I didn't need those other friendships because they, they weren't meant for me to keep moving with. Girl, as you were talking, I started to think about the many times that I have experienced failed friendships. Because mm-hmm. I've been dealing with failed friendships and relationships since middle school, okay? Um, and it wasn't until I got into my purpose. <laughs> when I tell you, when I found God, that is when God started sending me all the right people. Mm-hmm. Because just like you, I've been in moments where I I swore off dudes. I was like, I ain't talking to no, no God. I'm good. I didn't right. date for like what? You remember six, seven years? I didn't talk to nobody. People tried to talk to me, but I wasn't trying to. I'm good. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? All because somebody lied to me. All because one man, one dude, one liar. Changed the aspect for everybody. For everybody. For every male. <laughs> and that's something I had to learn. I think Usher was the biggest person to teach me that. You can't you can't make him pay for my for his mistakes. Don't make me okay. pay for his mistakes. Chill. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, I want to I want to say this too. There's a scripture in Isaiah that says, "He will give me beauty for ashes." Mm. And then Ty Tribbett has a song called "Beauty for Ashes," and I used to sing that song hard in tears, crying at night, singing that song because. In that moment, I was so lonely. I had no friends, no one I could trust. I had been betrayed by family, friends, loved ones. This was way before I hit my career in healthcare. I felt like nothing was working. Nothing in work was working. Nothing in friendships. Relationships were not working. I had somebody cheat on me right right then in, in that moment. You see what I'm saying? My parents and I, our relationships were so difficult like it was just hard for them to understand me so I felt like the whole world was crushing in on me and God was like he showed me that verse he showed me that song it was like I will give you if you give me your life I will give you beauty Mm. for ashes and I look at my life now and where I am in 2020 because that was 2012 and he's done exactly that I have a friend you understand what I'm saying? You see our friendship and where we are in our friendship? I couldn't ask for a better friend. You understand what I'm saying? I couldn't ask for a better husband. Right. I'm not even trying to boast, but this is what God did for me. And I'm away from the toxicity. I am away from all of it. And so if, if anybody's going to be y'all living proof, take it from me. You give God your life, you give God your failures, and he will turn them around. Mm -hmm. He will give you beauty for ashes, make your life a story worth telling. Mm. This was kind of like a somber (laughs) purpose session because the rest of them were extremely hilarious and fun. And not to say that tonight wasn't fun either, but I'm trying to tell y'all, failure and is failure is not the end. Nope. Failure is just yo. Failure is stone. just the beginning. It's a stepping stone. It's just the beginning. You take that failure and watch everything fall into place. You be like, God, I'm ready to get up. I'm ready to go. Show me. Everybody in the Bible were failures. Every last one of them. They all failed at something. Jonah, failure. Moses, murderer. Who else? Abraham. Jacob, liar, thief. Abraham, liar. Who else? He don't use perfect people. He He don't don't use perfect perfect people. Ain't no perfect people for him to use. Okay. No one was a drunk. (laughs) <laughs> yes, a girl is. No, was a drunk. You know he needed that liquid courage. <laughs> Leave it to Steph. I'm sorry. Pray for me, y'all. We pray. <laughs> we pray. We pray. 
But we just try to let you know Rahab was a prostitute. Tamar okay. was a liar and a, a prostitute, whatever in car. She slept with her 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 father in law, okay? Ruth was a she was a false prophet, a priestess, whatever. She was in idolatry. And she all these people in the lineage of Jesus, all of them. Right. Failure is not the end. So I think that should motivate us to give people mercy. It's like, remember, failure is the person like, hello, failure messed up. And look where they at now. The Bible <laughs> juicy. You better talk about it, Kim. It is juicy. Yes, girl. Listen, the Bible stay being juicy. Okay. It got some stories. It's a soap opera. Okay. Soap opera. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> All right, so throw out your prayer request. We're going to take y'all prayer requests. Throw them out. This time we don't have uh, the timer, but y'all it's better. So what can we pray for y'all about? Throw them out. Put them in the thing. Put them in the chat. Anything you want. We gotta figure out how to do this pin thing because I, I, I want to know. I be seeing people pin their stuff. Forgiving heart. Okay. Yes, girl. As I have heartburn. Me too. <laughs> no, that was so strange. <laughs> oh, now the timer is on. Come on, y'all. Uh, one minute, 55 seconds. What else? What, what other prayer in? requests are in? Dang, how long is this supposed Why to go for? Like, after? guidance and more faith for sure. For sure, me starting school too too early, too, too much anxiety. Me starting school too much anxiety. Got you. Yes, girl, I'm with you. I don't know. Me too. I ain't ready for next semester. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think my class. I get new classes start in June. Pray for me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we gonna pray for that. And if you want people, uh, you can put up unspoken, unspoken if necessary. If you don't want to share, you want to keep it private. Happiness. Happiness. Oh, now I wanna hug you. <laughs> you not happy? I wanna hug you, now. You not happy? You about to come over? You not happy? She gonna be happy once you get see all them snacks. Mm. I already gave them the rules. <laughs> oh, I'm praying. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, please forgive me for talking about the snacks. And Lord, please help us um, just in order to recognize our ability to be strong and capable. Help us to believe everything that you say about us in regards to our identity and help us to not believe in failure being our identity. It is not who we are. You are who you, we, you, we are who you say we are. And so help us to believe in that. Um, just be with us, answer all of the prayer requests that was lifted, guide us, keep us, never leave us, never forsake us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Bye, guys. Bye. Seven, six, five.